hour time. OT, baby. First timer on the couch, Leslie Marshall. What'd you think of the first hour? Oh, Live TV by, with us. It went by so fast. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I, I was nervous at first, but then I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I was tell. just telling you this. I got the hang of it. I think I got, we're done. <laughs> it went by I so fast. But it, I, I really, I love this show, and I'm so psyched to be on Aww. the show. Well, hope we're you'll, glad you're hope here. Hope you'll have yeah. me back. Hope you'll oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of like child rearing in that sense. It's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, they're grown. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are very young. Leslie, still. and this but is echoed in the control. Control room. We will definitely have you back. Oh, well, thank it was you. Great oh, to have right. you. Thank you. And but Harris, to your point, uh, my kids are eight and uh, nine. Oh, and, uh, they're how, close to my when, kids' age. When, did, when does that fast part uh, happen? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's just what I've heard. It's not what I've actually experienced yeah. yet. But my mom yeah, yeah. says, "Oh, it's going to pass by so quickly." First of all, thanks to all the people who are just jumping on the live chat. I know it froze up a little bit because we're all getting on at the same time. But wow, uh, our our big big line of questions all lined up and ready to go here. Before we start with that, though, let's give some love to Pete Hegseth, who has a new book out yes. in the arena. And I called your military fighting equipment a knapsack on <laughs> the did. air. You did. Well, my father, okay. no doubt, is like speed dialing my husband right now. <laughs> Can you get a message to my daughter who was born on a military base that she's a loser? I'm going to take my knapsack to war. Yeah, <laughs> with my facial products. No. Um, so you had a quote from yeah. a Teddy Roosevelt speech speech where this title comes from that's right in your belongings in your equipment as you traveled as a that's soldier. right i carried it in a frame a plastic black frame in my duffel bag to iraq and afghanistan and guantanamo bay and it was just the man in the arena quote which is a lot of people will know it's not the critic who counts that quote and then i after i came back from afghanistan i read the whole speech and it's called citizenship in a republic and it's sort of un pc before there even was pc mm -hmm. and it makes the case for gritty citizenship and the really what we need for from citizens in order to keep our republic great and I felt like his words from 106 years ago are as relevant today as they were then as they would have been at the founding and so I wrote a book that channels what we need to do to get citizenship back in this country but also American leadership abroad Teddy Roosevelt was a big believer in American power and American leadership in the world I think we need that there's a conversation going on about that so the book makes the case on both fronts there was one quote that really jumped out at me that I love that kind of puts all of us in our place right now um, we are a country that is far more conscious of our rights than of our duties mm. yeah. which really strikes a chord because you think of the word rights you know as being a very positive thing these are our rights that we have in this country when you when you look at it in the context of that sentence mm -hmm. that we're so worried about what's mine what's my right mm -hmm. rather than what is my duty to this community and to everyone else what is my duty to this society and that those are roosevelt's yeah. words you're exactly I mean, right and there, of course there are rights that are in it, unalienable and our course. founders lay but the rest of it we should be looking inward at ourselves and thinking right. about what we can do how we can contribute how duty. we can be good citizens and it starts with earning a living and raising a good family and having character all of those things contribute to good citizenship before you talk about things like voting and protesting and all the things we think about when we think of citizenship. Free school. Well said. Wow. Wow. Pete Hegseth. Eloquent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm like Harris though. This is moving so fast on the chat. It's hard to keep <laughs> it's up. It's hard to keep up. Right? Uh, but like obviously it. a lot of people are talking about uh, John Kasich dropping out of the race and acknowledging, wow, what a feat. 17 it started with yeah. and now it's down to one wow yeah so here we are it, it is amazing I, I'm asking on the live chat will the hashtag never Trump people do what will they do next will they support Trump and unity for their party stay home write in a name or what what are your thoughts on that you know, I think it's going to be a split. I think some people are going to stay home. You know, uh, Bill O'Reilly said that, you know, earlier on the show. Uh, but I, I do think some people will come around to Trump, people that are big with uh, trade. I think a lot of those blue collar workers. But I do think there'll be a number of them that go for Hillary that find him not palatable uh, and, and divisive, especially if you look at women and uh, minority groups, especially Latinos. And think if Trump starts coming to the center, as you talked about. I mean, a lot of conservatives are going to say, hey, it was a bridge too far in the first place to be right. with Trump. Now he's right. coming to the middle, I can't in good faith. So he's got such a delicate dance. I, I think he could do it. There are scenarios in which he could, especially against such a flawed candidate like Hillary Clinton. But it is going to be um, amazingly difficult. You know, the other thing, this is, we're coming now, once he's the nominee, to a general election. Mm -hmm. Very different than a primary. And I, I think that Donald Trump's style plays better in a primary than a general. And different types of voters come out in November on both sides and people that say, hey, I'm independent. I don't want to align myself with one party or the other. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a tighter uh, battle for him. And he doesn't have that experience. And that is one thing that Hillary Clinton has and has a machine uh, behind her in her campaign. Uh, Dave so. FIC says, what do you all think about the anybody but Trump movement? And will we see a third party candidate? 
Your thoughts? I would say no, um, not not with any real vigor because it costs money. And I just don't know who's going to put their money behind that for a vanity mm. play. That's very pragmatic. Um, yeah, who is I it? I think there's no it, someone. I mean, that, Michael Bloomberg or something. But I mean, who's going to really? He's throw already money said he's not going right. to on something yeah. something like that. Um, I think. I mean, back to your point about how he's not a, a, an experienced politician. Now he's moving into the general. I think that he's created a new type of politician. He is an innately gifted marketer. I mean, he is somebody who just knows in his core on the moment in the second what is the marketing thing to say, which which is not something you can learn and is not something that other candidates have necessarily mm -hmm. had. I think we'll always remember this as the low energy Jeb election. Yeah. I mean, he um. took out the front runner, the big money candidate with this one phrase that everybody went, you know, he is low energy. And that just, it's sort of, that's the way he runs a campaign. And I think he'll keep that going, going forward. Well, the candidates haven't done themselves any favors by reinforcing. I mean, <laughs> well, they didn't fight back. Well, that's, what, that's the beauty of the label, <laughs> I mean, is that you know, I mean, in some I cases, mean, that's the thing. In some cases, that's what we saw. Right. And oddly, with Marco Rubio, the race went places where there were hmm. words on the couch. I remember... We were like, what well, did he just it say? It went there with Cruz at the end, too. I mean, Cruz emptied the magazines on Trump as well, talking about... You the know, verbal ones. Yeah, he did. I mean, it, there's there's no doubt. So I had asked if people will stay home. Lise Ann 77, and I'm going to quote her. Harris, staying home or writing in a name is the same as a vote for Hillary. And she says this, the Benghazi killer. So unlike Democrats, in a general election, you're going to have Republicans, independents, does what happened with our consulate staff, with our outpost staff and our ambassador in Libya and all the questions surrounding why they didn't get help that night and, and who made the certain decisions that, that let our people languish and die yeah. uh, and be attacked, um, will that resonate with independence, Leslie? I feel... And, uh, of course, any life that is lost, uh, you know, whether it's a service member, thank you for your service, Pete, or, you know, somebody in the foreign service, in an embassy, an ambassador or staff, um, it, it, it's terrible. And it doesn't matter to me who it happens uh, under. However, I feel that many Americans will feel like I do, which is 17 bipartisan investigations did not find that Secretary Clinton, when she was secretary, was directly to blame for that. And I, I think that a lot of independents uh, look at that. And, um, and, and I think that shows in uh, what they're looking at and what's important to them. Um, that is not important to them. It'll, right. be the, it'll be the line like, to the families that'll, that will be her detriment. I will say this. The one thing that could galvanize conservatives is watching the left froth and fight Trump. The whole he, shut him down, shut down his speech, all of that. Oh, that angers me a lot when I see what they're trying to do to Whether shut him down. Whether you're a Trump supporter Whether you're a Trump or person not. or not, it makes me want to run to the sidewalk and write Trump in chalk. Because, uh, because I hate the reaction. I, I don't use the word hate, but I dislike the I reaction that, uh, that they have in shutting people down. Leslie, I, I want a quick follow up with you, though, on Hillary Clinton, because yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. Has she put it to bed, though? Because it keeps coming up in such a way. You talk about the 17 investigative hearings and reports and so on and so forth. Perhaps it exists for the very reason of the families, for all of those unanswered questions. Have you been pleased with the way that she has responded? Things like what difference does it make? now and that's well, I think we all know that 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 sentence in context is different than it sounds out of context however to your point people do like those sound bites you yeah. know like somebody's low it's energy perception of and quite frankly I'm, you know quite frankly the term caring. Benghazi uh, you know uh, elicits an emotional reaction a very mm -hmm. visceral reaction and that's what people who are opposed to Hillary want and that is successful and you that's know, why you will hear it regarding her responses you know I've met Hillary Clinton in person. She's very different. Anybody's met her in person, in person than she is you know, on TV. And this is why she works better in smaller groups. Um, the warmth isn't there. And, I, and if, if she was saying, Leslie, advise me, you know, just be yourself, Hillary, is what I would say, because herself, as opposed Who to is the real candidate Hillary. Hillary, well, no, when you meet her, there is a warmth to her. <laughs> Almost everybody I've met, regardless of their uh, opinions of her, feelings toward her, or, you know, their politics, has yeah, said, wow, she's so experience. different in person. It wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't no your experience. What was your experience, Sandra? I thought you always teased me about, about being in my sneakers and my roller skates over at the NASDAQ during her last run, and I, they said, get down there, she's over at the NASDAQ, and I ran down there. 
wow, I've never been so fiercely denied from anybody. Um, Did she put you behind ropes like she does some Maybe of the it was the fox flag on the, my microphone. Aww. She didn't take Well, if but... you chased after anybody else, I'm sure that they would say, slow down. <laughs> Miss Smith has a question. <laughs> Real quickly, Saxton, uh, I, and I want to just say this because there's so many people on the live chat. This is kind of a trend. Saxton sums it up this way. Pony up and support Trump or deal with Hillary and her poor decisions. Uh, it's going to be interesting mm. to see if he continues on with the nickname that he's chosen. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, during our hour of TV, gave us a new one, the Ice Queen. Uh, so there, you know, <laughs> Pete cringes. Well, I don't know. But, could but it could be that personal or it could be policy, as Leslie says, that, that Trump and Hillary Clinton, should they meet down the way, would would clash on. We'll see. Yeah, Congratulations on the book. Right. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Thanks for having me. Outnumbered oh, in the arena. That's, is that the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll see you tomorrow. This is the arena. Thanks, Pete.